An alleged anonymous congressman has published an expose, or will soon publish an expose, on what being in Congress is actually like and what congressmen are actually like, admitting what is so very rarely admitted. It's called The Confessions of Congressman X. And there's actually a picture on it. But I have a feeling that's not the actual mm. guy because then it's <laughs> not really anonymous, but somebody's on the cover. Here are some of his assorted quotes. Feel free to jump in anytime you want, guys. First quote, like most of my colleagues, I promise my constituents a lot of stuff I can never deliver. But what the hell? It makes them happy hearing it. My main job is to keep my job. I like that. Nice admitting. We're seeing a lot in this ca campaign, by the way. He says, uh, goes on to say, I contradict myself all the time, but few people notice. Wait, I think it's Trump. One minute I rail <laughs> against excessive spending and ballooning debt. The next minute I'm demanding more spending on education, health care, unemployment, benefits, conservation projects, yada, yada, yada. Uh, voters are incredibly ignorant. It's far easier than you think to manipulate a nation of naive, self-absorbed sheep who crave instant gratification. Damn. But then the section where I think Cenk Uyghur is going to be most interested, where he gets into the funding for his campaigns and how they go about finding it. Business organizations and unions fork over more than $3 billion a year to those who lobby the federal government. Does that tell you something? We're operating a fucking casino. He goes on to say, personally, fundraising is so time-consuming, I seldom read any bills I vote on. I don't even know how they'll be implemented or what they'll cost. My staff gives me a last-minute briefing before I go to the floor and tells me whether to vote yay or nay. How bad is that? Some contributions are subtle. Donations to a member's nonprofit foundation, funding a member's charitable pet project, paid Wall Street speeches, offsetting the cost of a member's portrait to adorn the committee room he or she has so faithfully served. And I have more. But, yeah, it, the thing is, all these quotes are great, but I, of course, have to give the caveat we have no independent confirmation that this is an actual congressman, and it is a vanity press publisher. This is not a gigantic publisher where we can be assured that they did the due diligence to make sure no, that this but is a I congressman. Mean, but, the, but the claims are sufficiently vague that we know that it's true because you only have to talk to, con to retired congresspeople and they all say the same thing. I mean, I've mm -hmm. spoken to, to congresspeople who say you basically have to spend about 40% of your time on the phone asking, begging people for money. So you spend about two or three hours in the morning, two or three hours in the afternoons begging people for money, and, and then in between do week. You, do, you do whatever you, you what, can. Sorry, to what do you mean country. sufficient? This isn't challenging you. I just don't understand, literally. What do you mean sufficiently vague? Oh, I mean, like, the, the, all of the things that are being said. It's not like he's saying, I walked into Harry Reid's office one afternoon and he told me to, to get right. staffed and said X, Y, Z. He's, he's simply relating the reality of what it's like to be a congressperson in the United States. I mean, in, in this country, without public funding of elections, basically, not the way that, we, that most other democracies do it, you have to raise so much right. money that it's just yeah. common sense. So you're saying it's totally things. plausible. Absolutely yeah, it's course. plausible. Course it's completely it's, right. plausible. Right, right, I mean, right. you know, if you, if you are out and you've been, you're on the road, right. you're a congressperson, you're in a motel and uh, you know you get a, a list of 15 people who have called you and left a message who you need to call back and you don't have time you've only got time to call two of them you're gonna call your wife and you're gonna call whoever gave you the mistress. most money at yeah, the last exactly. your <laughs> your mistress. Your you're gonna call whoever gave you the last, most money to get you elected last yeah. time so that because they've bought they've yeah. bought you that's just the way the system works yeah. so l let me get into more details and more quotes uh, on that because I found that of course to be the most interesting uh, and uh, part and now you're gonna think look Guys, you've been talking about this a long time, so it's not like there's a giant revelation to you. That's right. But uh, the rest of the, the media treats this like it's not happening, like like that this isn't the thing that motivates them the most. So, for example, I've in the past uh, intimated that that the nonprofit foundations that these politicians set up is a way to hire family members, et cetera, and funnel money in that direction. And now the Clinton Foundation has done this on some sort of gigantic scale. In some ways, they've done more good, and they have so much money that they don't need to be directly corrupt and hire family members. They don't have to play small ball like that. On the other hand, I think the real scandal, if there is any in the emails, is what did the State Department do for people who gave millions and millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation? They didn't give the Clinton, the Saudis and the government of uh, Qatar did not give all that money to the Clinton Foundation out of the goodness of yeah, their heart. Yeah, although they are mensches, I think we can all agree. Yeah, oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the government, and, the government. And, and look at how petty these politicians are. They, they'll sell themselves out for so that they'll get paid, uh, somebody will get paid to do a portrait of them. Like, oh, you paid for my portrait, okay, what do you need in your, in, in your bill? But let's get more, more into the quotes here as he explains, most of my colleagues are dishonest career politicians who revel in the power and special interest money that's lavished upon them. 
See, now, if you said, if I said that on CNN. You're a conspiracy theorist. That's right. And in fact, I've said similar things on Howard Kurtz's program back when he was on CNN, and it was met with a smirk like, oh, yeah, sure. Right. right? Like, politicians would be dishonest, and the system's rigged and corrupt, and all they care about is the money. <laughs> okay, Mr. Liberal. Right. right? And here's a congressman saying, of course, of course, we, they, we have to spend all of our time. I've talked to a current congressman who says, I asked him, hey, do you have lunch with the Republicans? Is there any comedy left? Right? He's like, Republicans, I don't have lunch with Democrats. I don't have lunch with my friends. I have to go and make calls to raise money. If I don't, my staff's going to kill me. There's no lunches left. All we do is money, money, money. Those right? poor people. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, no, but honestly, I do think that that is, this, that, it, we, that is the exact right attitude that we should have. Because I think our, our response often to the corruption in Washington is to say, ah, they're all bums. They're, the only people who go there are selfish individuals. Right. You know what? That's not true. It is a system. That right. has perverse incentives mm -hmm. that forces them to, to into this horrible, humiliating dance of kissing the asses which of all the people why, who have money. Not to bring it back to Bernie Sanders, but I have to say, which is why his critique of of the system and the way he talks about it is I don't understand when people accuse him of attacking Hillary Clinton's integrity when he does that. Like everyone agrees that there's a systemic problem, right? And what you just said is that it's a systemic thing. It's not about individual choices or agency, right? So that to me is the strongest part of the Sanders campaign and the Sanders movement or message. So it's just funny to me that people will respond to that. I've seen this, people trying to manipulate that critique, which everyone agrees on, as an example of Sanders like going below the belt yeah. with Hillary Clinton. And yeah. to me, it could not be less, of, less personalized. It could not be more kind of generous and saying, I'm just making a systemic critique that applies to everyone because this is what happens when money's in politics. And it's sort of a representation of what Cenk was saying, that, that you sound like a conspiracy theorist. Right. Not if you talk about it in a general sense, although they'd prefer not even that. Sanders can say that politicians get influenced, and I think almost every liberal voter, for the most part, has believed that to some extent over the past few years. But when you link it to a particular politician, then you seem uncouth. Mm. That's not a nice thing to do. And so a lot of libs who believed that the Koch brothers are having a, an, an acidic effect on the system, now that Hillary Clinton is very good at using that system, she's very skilled with that system, oh, well, come on, it doesn't actually influence anyone. You can be handed millions of dollars. It doesn't influence you at all. And, and I think that that's uh, slightly ridiculous. So, so b back to his explanations of the mundane, not the presidential, but the mundane right. actions of almost all the congressmen almost all the time. He <laughs> says, election nice. campaigns are a pain in the ass unless I win, in which case it's a nice ego boost. Then it's back to shaking the money tree and selling access to me and my legislative staff. So again, every specific politician, to John and Katie's point, will say, how dare you besmirch my reputation? But in reality, behind the scenes, they're saying, uh, go shake the money yeah. tree. And what are we selling today? We're selling access to me and my staff yeah, that's right. so you can influence me and our legislation. And sometimes I'll just take what the lobbyists wrote and put it into the bill. Literally. And that's what's important to, to understand as well. I think when people, when, when someone like Hillary, for example, gets attacked during a, a debate by Bernie about whether or not she is corrupted by her close ties to Wall Street, she'll always respond by saying, show me one right. position that right. I have changed well, of She's course southern, we can't show you one position that you've changed because that's not that would be actually illegal corruption. Right. Mm. That's not the way it works. If we, what it, right. what the claim is not that you you flip your specific position. The claim is that you are swimming in an ocean of money and that you, right. that the people who have access to you who are able to shape your worldview yeah. who you're beholden right. to are the thing. people who you surround yourself with thing. and those are the people with money. I would love but, it if she was like whereas cognizant of the fact that I have been paid in dollars, I introduced this bill Obviously, they're not going to do that. That's yeah. my impersonation of wearing it on your sleeve. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Like before you introduce, yeah. Yeah. before yeah. you flip flop on the bankruptcy right. yeah. bill, yeah. you're like, no, nah, I'd like to yeah. note for the record that right. I got a lot of money for right. this. Point of order, <laughs> point of information. Can I, just, can, I, can I just make a quick point about public financing of, of elections since mm -hmm. I, I know a bit about it from Australia? The actual greatest benefit for a candidate is in the is, is not terribly expensive. Like the multi multi million dollar campaigns don't have a huge amount of additional benefit in terms of bringing new voices into the um, into the race. So in any given race, with ten thousand, a hundred thousand uh, dollars, an unknown person could get the visibility that they might need to challenge an incumbent. And then if, even if the incumbent has millions, at least like when you actually look at it, they've got sort of seventy to eighty percent of of, of what you of the benefit exactly. It's a not it's it, like it's an exponential thing. 
And so you could have public financing of elections that would not be terribly expensive. In Australia, you basically estimate how many votes you're going to get, and the government gives you a loan for that amount. And then if you don't get them, you have to cover the difference. Yeah. But if you get more, then you get more money because the government pays for elections. And why do we need to keep paying for, for, for ad time so much? Yeah. Force the networks to provide a certain amount of of time for, for debates and for people to put their policy positions together. This is not crazy harebrained stuff. This is something that lots and lots yeah. of democracies do. But unfortunately, the, the ex what you just expressed, you're probably not going to hear on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News because all of them are making tons of money running those campaign ads. If you if the public finances your campaign, you might work for the public. If private interests finance your campaign, you're likely to work for yeah. those right. private interests. Again, something that would seem conspiratorial if you said it exactly. on CNN. Right. What do you yeah. mean, private interest? Right. What? The ones that right, right, right. can't right. be, literally. And now yeah. let's go to a break. Right. Yeah. Right. Those right. private interests. Right. But, but until we actually change the system, as, as both uh, Jenny and Joshua pointed out, they have to spend hours and hours every day making those calls. I worked on a congressional campaign making calls once, and I wanted to kill myself after one day. These congressmen and senators are suffering every day. Set them free. Go to wolf packcom that's right. That's that's how you we need an amendment. Otherwise, you can't fix the system. They're wedded to this system. Right. This is how they get reelected. So they have an enormous advantage uh, over their opponents because they have already been bribed. Right. <laughs> they they're already pre, uh, pre bribed. Those private mm. interests have already gotten a return on investment from these yeah. guys. They're proven products. Yeah, this is pre bribed is the exact pre -bribed, way to right? put it because. Yeah. Uh, like you were saying with Hillary Clinton, she says, show me where I was received money and then I changed my position. That's not how it works. Exactly, they right. give you the money for years so that you won't even consider going against right. them. They right. elect the people they know will always support them. And in this particular presidential election cycle, it's worth saying that a, a, a significant component of Trump's support comes from the fact that he's not beholden like that. Yeah, yeah. totally. People know. But he has announced that for the general election yes. he's going to be raising right. money. Yes, but I think his success in the primaries is partly because people know that he's not full of shit because Maybe. he's funding himself. Right. And that's not even the point. The point is there is a perception that he is self-funded and not beholden to the donor class. And Same for Bernie like Sanders. And shockingly, those are two candidates that came out of nowhere and had enormous popularity because Unlike the people on TV, the rest of us all know how corrupt the system is. So when someone challenges that corrupt system, whether on the left or the right, they go, yes, thank God, finally, right? Yeah. But the real way to do it is not some knight in shining armor that's going to ride in. Stop talking about Trump like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the president almost can't do anything about this. Uh, the reality is you need an amendment to, to clean up the system entirely, right? right? And the amendment is... The president doesn't even vote on. You, in fact, you can get an amendment without going through Washington at all. You can just do it through the states. So don't get caught up in the in all the hype about all this stuff. The, the reality is, it can be done, as John pointed out, wolf-pack.com. That's how you actually do this. So you end this madness. And now even congressmen are coming out and going, "Yep, it's complete madness." And that thing right there is not the Capitol. It's a fucking casino.